So uh, uh, the orchestration layer can ramp that up from one instance to 10,000 instances, uh, uh, you know, 20,000 instances. It really depends on um, you know what kind of load you, you're experiencing. And you can set pre thresholds that are max and minimum. And, um, you know, how many instances do you want to be sitting there waiting? Um, but really, it allows you to save cost because you don't always have to have 10,000 instances of this thing sitting there. You can have one instance and when you or tenants is just sitting there waiting for traffic, and when it spikes, it brings everything up and gets all your instances running. And then, as soon as that traffic starts to dry down and that spike is over, you automatically bring those instances down to running um, you know, maybe a 10, 100, however many you need, and it, it just it, it watches that. So you're only going to pay for what you use, um, and that's really a game changer in the industry because again, you think back like we were saying earlier in the presentation. 5, 10, 20, or gosh, 10, 20 years ago, we had to have a single piece of software taking all these requests, or hardware taking all these requests. Um, you don't need to do that anymore. You, you can have a, a, a beefy cluster of maybe three or four computers taking these requests, and they will um, only use what they need to use when they need to use it. Um, so, last time we got um, what we saw the policy up and running in Nomad, um, we had a, a test function. Um, just to be able to show how you can write a test function or a, a function as a service and um, bring it in. Um, and today, really, we're going to get the next half of that um, going and kind of show you how you can have a couple of these functions talking to each other, maybe. Um, we're in the middle of getting all of this stuff set up right now. I think um, running into technical difficulties as always happens during one of these presentations. But um, maybe we can go around, go around and do a little, you know. Yeah, let's do that. I just agree. Apologies to everyone. I, I got a new machine, and so I'm in the middle of that environment setup. Right? Hey, I understand. Uh, yeah, so it is what it is. But we've got uh, a couple of community members here live with us. Why don't we go on and do a little? Yeah, I'll, I'll start. I'll, I'll start again. Um, again, Miguel Gonzalez. I'm a senior software engineer with uh, Recharge Payments. Um, we're a subscription uh, payment processing um, service. We started back in 2014. Um, the, the founders were sitting around and um, had a little co company in their apartment writing plugins for Shopify. And one of the customers came and asked them to write a um, plugin that allowed them to process subscriptions. So, if you ever see that little subscribe and save button on a website, when you click um, subscribe and save, someone's handling those payments time and time again. Um, we, uh, we had about 80% 80, 80 last time I looked of all the subscription payments on Shopify. Um, we're, we're branching out to several other platforms, um, but um, we just got a $2 million valuation last year, and it's uh, just been um, an awesome experience being a part of that. I've been there almost a year now. Um, so I'm on a team um, called Platform Services Team. We, we run a um, service called the Event Bus, and the Event Bus takes um, messages, events from all of our systems and processes. Um, we do a lot of data processing using cloud functions, which um, is really the, the you know, kind of one of the, the things that we're going to show here was the FOSD version of that, which is another way we can run a, a, a microservice or a cloud function or a lambda function, whatever you want to call it, inside an orchestration tool like, like um, Nomad. Um, we, uh, just for example, I'm, I'm working on a product project right now to take all the metrics from our cloud functions and um, put them into a service called uh, signal effects so that we can graph and see what everything is doing in real time. Um, we um, needed to take each function was, was posting its own data over to um, signal effects independently. The problem with that is that it would take time. And this function would sit there and, and after it was done doing what it needed to do, it would send that data over. And sometimes it would take an extra 10, 12, 15 seconds. So that function was sitting there just doing that for 10 or 15 seconds. So what we do now um, is drop it into a pub sub queue. And um, you may have heard of things like RabbitMQ or um, you know, the, the SNS on Amazon side. We're using um, GCP, so I we use something called pub sub. And we have another cloud function that all it does is listen to this queue and um, pick up those metric events and then send them over to signal effects for us. Problem with that is we process a ton of data. So um, we looked. Uh, we just put the slide about a week ago, and we were running about 500,000 um, events per second through this um, one cloud function. So we had to scale from, um, you 
you know, I think we had 100 instances of this thing running run initially, and all of a sudden we had to have 3,000 instances run. It doubled our file volume cost. So it, this is the type of thing that we've got to deal with at scale um, when you're talking about microservices or, or um, cloud functions. It's cool that they can scale up, but you're going to get a ton of lock data. Um, so right now we're looking at another product called Open Telemetry to where we can handle this and take it off of our cloud function platform and put it into Kubernetes and have what is called Open Telemetry Collector collect the data for us and um, save on costs. Because we went from about 1,500, um, I, don't, I don't remember the cost, but it was exactly, uh, it doubled our cloud function costs in, uh, per day overnight. And it was, um, you know, and for a company that's just getting started, we got to, um, you know, we got to save on costs. Um, look, look into the future. So that's something that cloud functions will, will allow us to do. We can process a ton of data, we can scale up what we need to scale up, and we can scale back down when we're done. Um, that function that's right now processing 500,000 bits per second, once we move it over to telemetry, um, we can shut that thing up and it's done. Who, who cares what we're doing? Um, so that's a little bit about my, my background. Um, you you want to share you know, you know, where you guys are, are from what you guys are doing? Yeah, hi, I'm Freeman Jackson. I am, I work for the state of Florida as a programmer, and I'm not representing them here. I'm representing my company, Fourth Industrial Systems, and uh, we do cloud native and uh, have a patent technology for uh, large scale language models with uh, cloud natives as well, okay. and uh, federal contracting is. The focus of that particular entity, and um, I'm looking forward to the presentation. And, and, and uh, thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, Ryan Johnson, I'm a uh, staff solutions architect at VMware, um, focus on the cloud platform. Um, uh, Hashi, core, core contributor to Terra Home Packer. Very cool. I'm David Hightower. Um, Student at TCC right now. I did software development for 18 years with Marquee Software, local, local firm. Got a little burnt out on it, so I quit, went back to school, uh, get my brain back into it. I'm working just as a paralegal right now, but I'm just trying to get back into the software world. Very, very cool. Yeah, I've known at least, at least one or two guys over at Marquee over the years. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, they got a great, great business model for sure. Yeah, and I was at um, Pat Live for many, many years. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Roberts. That's exactly what I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> He's not there anymore. No, no, no. Andy's not listening. I can list off a ton of names from Pat Live. Yeah. I mean, I Chris, Chris Pod, he was over at VMware for many, many I think he still is at VMware. He's still there now, but um, he was with us for many years. Oh, yeah, we're live right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but I don't think there's anybody on my We're We're stalling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If they, they record this session, I think it will be made available. Okay, yeah, it's not. Uh, we're, so we're kind of having a laid back session right now. There's still not be here. Some technical difficulties as we um, we, we, we go along. But um, we have Derek with HashiCorp, he's been there a couple, uh, a couple years. Two years now. It's my two year anniversary. It's a great company. It's a lot of good people in this room. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so I think a lot of us are working, right, I'm working with them. Um, so it's cool to um, get to see. Have a little bit of a community with some sponsors and, and, and you know, build some camaraderie there. <laughs> how, how are you coming? I am uh, experiencing dev environment transition woes. Yeah. Um, so, what's going on here, we can try to live people, is that uh, a few things. Um, the dev environment that I've got set up has a set of regions and data centers that are not what are in the pack or in the, uh, the cows thing, which is no big deal, but you should be able to overrun that, uh, override that. Um, pack is using a, uh, I'm just gonna have to do a little reference checking on the docs. I'll go ahead and start sharing screens since we're just kind of doing some live, live coding and debugging here anyway. So, and this will be good for anybody who uh, wants to use pack. Um, so we've got a pack defined uh, called FOSD. You want to you want to put it up on the yeah, let me put it on the uh, big screen too. Uh, basically, we're like hosting the radio to 
always avoid the dead air. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really, anytime there's a mistake, you just act like everything is that, that's how the plan is. <laughs> it's good, it's good. It's so good, you know. I think, I think with, with Forrest, to do a live demo in such a complex environment. <laughs> Um, and they've got this community project, and I'll show it to you real fast on the interwebs, called uh, Hashibot. And it's a template. And what will happen when you run, you can just fork this template repo and uh, follow their installation steps, and you'll have a fully running Hashi stack with console vault and nomad ready to go in a very probably about 30 minutes or less, and I'm working on some scripting to make it faster. Um, the, the really, the only thing that most of the time you're just waiting for vagrant provisioning to happen, um, and then um, uh, then you just gotta go to the, the whole vault and seal dance through the UI, and I'm working, working on some scripts to, to kind of make that happen automatically from the CLI. Um, so it's pretty cool, and then I'm also, I'm, my goal here, sorry, just to sort of stall some of this, uh, is to make it a, uh, I've forked it and I'm modifying it so that you can make it a, a development environment if you want to contribute to Nomad. And then if I can get it nice and generic enough, I'll contribute it upstream. And if not, we'll just sort of keep it over there. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, and I'm using it, I've already got here, you can see I've got console running, I've got vault running, I've got Nomad running, they're all talking to each other. No, that's ready to go. I got my clients. They've got all my drivers installed. And everything's good to go. There's one big disconnect, which is you will notice that these are in a uh, region called US, uh, and they're in a data center. And their data centers are US East one, US West two, US West one. And that's you know they're emulating something that might be more realistic in a real world environment. All of our assets sort of default to the default region and DC1. We just do that in all of our assets as the defaults. So when I'm trying to run the FASD job, it's not deploying correctly because it's like, hey, there's no there's no available region. I can't I can't place this job, right? So what's cool about the FASD author is they provided a variables file. And using that variables file, we should be able to override See there, you can see these two right here, region and data center. Mm -hmm. So I should be able to uh, just pass, uh, override that with the region data center that we're targeting. I just can't remember the incantation at the, the PAC uh, CLI uh, to get the, the bars passed correctly. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go a little, we're going to go look at the documentation because it is in fact a live coded session. And we all know that none of us remember that. Um, if we spend our entire day Googling. Uh, so let's look at the, I'm actually going to go look at the community registry where this pack has been published. It's not that good to close my brain. Yeah, it's that good to close my brain. Um, so FOSD is out here on the Nomad Pack community registry. Uh, and this is that variables file I was just looking at. And let's look at their readme and see if they gave us some helpful hints on that. Like an example from it or something. They didn't, but that's okay. Somebody in here did. Uh, so what I want to do is, I just can't remember off the top of my head how to pass the override variables. 
So, let's see if it's in the basic three. Uh, let's go with getting started. And you already explained the Nomad. And yeah, we'll do a quick refresher for you uh, yeah. for anybody who's, who, who just joined us. Um, so, Nomad is a workload orchestrator from HashiCorp. Okay. Um, it's one of our four big products. Uh, and what it allows you to do is deploy uh, different uh, workloads across your fleet of servers. So you provision a bunch of, of virtual machines or bare metal servers, you install Nomad on all of them, you connect them, and then uh, you say, okay, this machine has you know, GPUs, and this machine has Docker, and this machine has Docker and GPUs, and this machine has Java and Docker or whatever. And when you submit a job to the Nomad Orchestrator, it'll say, hey, I'm going to go look across your fleet of machines and figure out like how, which machines can fulfill this request, which ones have the capabilities I need to run this job. Okay. And then I'm going to, you know, based on the count that you put in the job, and let's say you want 50 instances of this thing, it's going to go figure out where to place them based on this, the algorithm that you set up. Can you also do cost? Pardon me? Can you also do it based on cost? Uh, we have things coming for that. Um, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, we also have um, we also have an add-on tool called the Autoscaler, which can basically you know use, you can use it to burst the number of instances, VM instances you have based on on over you know the, the volume of workloads you're getting. Um, and uh, we'll, I've got a prototype of something that can actually do. Uh, scheduling based on uh, uh, carbon consumption. So it can ping APIs and move your workloads around uh, based on where the most carbon effective place to run them is right now. So it kind of like follow the sun, where's the solar energy helping you do that, <laughs> you know, that, kind, of, that kind of thing. Um, so there's some pretty interesting things you can do with it. Um, and so it'll, put, it'll push those things out and then it integrates, it has a native service discovery, discovery mechanism um, that we just released in 1.3, uh, where it can find the other services inside the, uh, the system without any add-on components. Prior to that, we only, you had to use it with our service mesh product console. Um, but the console really? is a full service mesh okay. with more capabilities. So you can still work with the console, but if you just need service discovery, you can work with just native and that native service discovery. What were you going to ask? So like Kafka or? Um, Kafka is more for streams, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah it's streams. Okay. We're, we're going to be implementing Kafka or something on our side. Yeah, that's that's more it's a slightly different use case, but um, IoT ish. Yeah, the uh, the service discovery part is more about like where is this thing? You know, like how do I resolve this URL into that thing? You can use you can use console name DNS, or you can use um, essentially like a service name and alias. Mm -hmm. And then it'll just go, okay, I know what that, how that maps that IP address and I'll, I'll route your request function. So Nomad's job is to push the work around across whatever servers you've got uh, provisioned. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Can I answer the question? Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're doing here is we are trying to, uh, we want to get a hack. We want to get the Nomad hack Started. We want to get the incantation to uh, there. We go. This should give us the, the basics about how to pass variables to the pack. So here we go. So it should be that no man pack run hello world whatever your pack name is and then you dash dash bar and bar variable. <laughs> Pretty much like anything Terraform or Vagra would be. <laughs> right. So let's see. I feel like that's what I was just doing. Uh, I'm going to have to move that off at the end. with string parts. 
person. Yeah. Um, and what I'm worried about is that we've got some hyphens in our variable names. So I wonder if uh, you explicitly quote that. Was there a single quote on it? Well, I feel like practice is double quotes, but it might be more broken. We'll see. What were you going to say? Yeah. No. Those may not be used here. MPV is like your image of the hyphen. Yeah, sorry, I should have explained that. Uh, and here, this just to show you the original error message that I was running into, uh, it'll basically come back. And I've got my, my nomad um, uh, address environment variable set up. Oh, I think it's going to, it should. when I was trying to run the cows in that. So, sorry, here I'll show you down here. So all of our stuff kind of assumes you've got some environment variable set up to tell it which server to talk to. Jobs, and then we'll do a no man node status to make sure I'm talking to the right cluster because I've got multiple. Yep, so this is one we want to look at. We got US1. So definitely talking to the, to the machine that we want to talk to. So then I try to run this pack again. It's probably going to barf at me and say, hey, no path to region. Right. So that's useful and helpful. Um, now we just got to figure out. How to get the, the variable names right so that we can override the region and the data centers. And oh, I wonder, I wonder if this data centers thing is expecting a it's not. Let's think about it. What are we going to do, T? Uh, this is another community, uh, a community path. So we can either debug the community path, or we can try to run it with no modification, and we can modify our cluster so that the regions match what the path expects, the region and the data centers. Um, during this once one drive, you're basically playing with the uh, base. So I don't. I, I think what I'm running into here is that there's there's probably something wrong in this path in well, terms of, of, of how it's uh, interpreting the variables. Uh, so I'm thinking that the path of least resistance might be for us to modify Cal's file, the job file. That's right. easy. You just go yeah. to that the job spec and modify that to a different uh, data center. Mm -hmm. Right. And then maybe let's this will give us a chance to look at how you update nomad servers. 
Uh, so let's let's do that. So we've got six boxes uh, that we're going to have to modify. So we'll have to go through a little song and dance with each one of them. But it's no big deal. We got, we're, 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 we'll, we'll probably get there by the end. NPDs for that stand. It's a alias I've got set up for my Nomad Hack Dev build, okay. which is I've got the, the source code loaded and um, built, and then I just have an alias in my back and my profile that. Um, Let's me type three letters instead of a bunch plus a hyphen. But every time there's a band with three letters, it's so many. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So set all the aliases. So we're going to do this. So we're, all these boxes are vagrant machines. Um, we're going to do a vagrant SSH into each one. Uh, and we're going to, they're all called node server one, two, three, and node client one, two, three. And this will give us a chance to kind of tour how they set up the uh, HashiBox as well, which is kind of cool. So uh, they have a directory called HashiBox at the root where they put their configuration stuff. Uh, and we're going to go to Overrides, uh, Nomad, Config. Yep, and there's our, that's the file where we do our overrides. So we'll put Overrides, and we'll go back to the beginning. We're going to actually use Got to, they do it in a uh, user protected, so I'm going to have to sudo to them in. Just a quick, uh, and we're going to say the region is, uh, we've got to do an I. We're going to say the region is U, S, West, 1. And the data center uh, is, let's see, if we know that URL fast. Oh, the region is US and, and the data center is US West 1. Sorry. Uh, so we'll do US and then US West 1. All right, so that should get us compatible with, um, I'm sorry, that's what they're already set to. We're going to set it to, uh, do, 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 this is on the server. We want it to match the packs, which are going to be. C1. One. Okay, and we'll say default. Who's the default region? So everything usually does that. So we'll escape, right, quit, and then we gotta do the same thing on three, actually six machines. So we'll go ahead and uh, exit this one. Hopefully, we can do a sudo. Restart. Oh, this will be interesting. We're changing the regions, we're changing. We may have to, we may have to wipe our nomad state. We'll see what happens. Those are switch we're trying to catch up here. It seems like you're building a cluster. I am building a cluster. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing. And, and in so doing, you're only seeing a, a few of the machines and a hundred people down. Is that kind of it? I'm sorry? How many? Machines were you right now? That, six that, was, that was, yeah, that was machine one of six. Okay. So now we're going to call this DC one escape. So when we run the hash hash box, you do a vagrant enough that it brings up six instances at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll see. When they come up, what did they do? What was the enter process? Or there's a whole lot that get goes on. Um, if you really want to look, it's like uh, we are one. Which six boxes will we now become one? <laughs> Let's actually do this because I I'm, I'm interested to see what uh, what just happened because we should have a. So what happened when we restarted the server is all kinds of stuff. It's coming up. It's doing. Um, it sets up this bolt raft store. This is our database uh, on. Disk. Uh, it's setting up the raft cluster and surf membership for who's who's a member of the cluster. It's trying to de determine leadership. It's starting up schedulers. Uh, it's trying to join the other servers. But right now we've got a screwed up situation. We've only we've only brought two up with the new data center and the new region, so one's out. They don't have a quorum. So that's going to be some interesting stuff that's going on. Uh, so yeah, we don't want to stop right now because we're risking a lot of stuff. So let's exit this machine and get that last server going. 
Now, let's be honest, it's, it's pretty good software, so it'll be pretty fault tolerant for a while, you know, uh, if, you, if you do do this. Uh, oops, now I gotta remove my incantation because I lost my buffer. Uh, what was it? Uh, LS, Apache Boss, uh, Default, no. Overrides, yeah. Overrides. Is the incantation your? No, I wish I could say that that was my original, but that's a long, that's an old internet thing. I've never heard of study use that term before in, in terms of. <laughs> I like it. I'm sorry, isn't it? I don't have that to do with magic. <laughs> it, it definitely was uh, an early Linux or Unix kind of thing. When I first got into, the, into um, computing in '97, that was a very common thing to find on user user forums. Okay. We have to do it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of dungeon masters in those books. A whole lot of them. Alright, so. Let's get the Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Stranger Things, for bringing that back. Bringing that back. It's great. It's yeah, it is awesome. We just got done with those right last week. That was also awesome. Uh, now, let's see what happens. We're trying to finish those already. Let's see what's happened. Okay, we got we got three failed servers. We got two that left, one that failed, one that left. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, the old ones aren't right that way yet. No, they have no good garbage collecting go. Um, so then we're going to I'm try to copy this buffer again. So this is a like a disaster recovery lesson instead of a FASD lesson. So that, uh, that's okay. Why you're doing that? The FASD stuff is that based on Open FAS that yes. Alex, yeah, Alex it's, Ellis work? It's the same people with their next iteration of the project is the way I interpret it. Right. Yeah. That's right. Because I work at VMware. Alex worked for us for a while, oh, and then he and then he, he left. So I didn't know he did to start work on that on the next iteration. Because which yeah, the first iteration we have in, in part. Have it embedded in some of our software. Well, you got an iteration. Huh? You got an iteration. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we uh, in our software, we have um, we have our FAS system for one of our orchestration systems that's based on open FAS. Okay. So. All right, so now we're going to go into client two. So we're almost there. We've got two more boxes to, to do this to. Reminds me of a swarm cluster. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting that you say that. Somebody asked us to consider investing in like a, a swarm conversion utility. Because swarms essentially, I mean, there's not a lot going on in that. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> it's, a cool, it's a cool tech, though. I like yeah, it. it I, really, cool. I really enjoy it. It's really. Four other sets of eyes in the room. So if anybody if I that figured any of us <laughs> uh, uh, then I'm not solely to blame because this is, should be pair programming for the win. Those are some of the best days I have I work on more than two sets of eyes, or more than one set of eyes on that. Uh, and then last box. Nobody caught that. Nobody caught that. Uh, it is good, 100%. Uh, 
Clients. One of them still thinks it's in US East 1. Client 3. Did I not? That was all I think it did. Did I, did I not restart it though? No. No, I didn't. Yep, I didn't do the system CTL restart. Those servers, or are they just in the wrap box? So I still don't want to do it here. Yeah. No process communication between containers. So it would just pick up a default. But it doesn't, it doesn't have one defined. It should just go to the default. Mm. Well, I mean, that's probably worse. 
Set it to no. No. That would be interesting. Oh, y'all, I really apologize for this. Uh, oh, I like this. No. <laughs> uh, So there's, it looks like there's a problem with the path. So rather than running FOSD, we will be debugging uh, the community path. Let's see what's going on in the UI over there. Um, I see you poking around that. Oh, yeah. Let's see how the path works. It's not global for the readers. <laughs> I'm just Googling there. All right, so we got one example job running. And it's placed and it's healthy. All right, so what are we to do? Decisions, decisions. All right, so let's think about this. It, it ran last time. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but at the time, we were literally, I, I mean, I got it running locally uh, on my own, but I was using just a default nomad, like dev nomad. I wasn't using, I didn't have to pack anything, I wasn't using anything. I followed like the, the nomad quick start guy, got nomad running, and then um, was running with those compiled FOSD functions. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I know i got a different vagrant cluster. We don't have a whole ton of time left. So I'm going to do this real fast. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to see into my uh, code nomad. I'm going to really do my machine <laughs> and see if I can do a vagrant Our, based off of our, our repo vagrant uh, file. Oh, that was on um, app.vagrant.com? Oh, like the, the what? Those images? Oh, uh, it's just like a bento box that okay. we download from the, the yeah, it's from the app.vagrant. Yep, exactly. Um, I love the people that bento box. <laughs> yeah. These are going to have to shut down. They might be trying to use the same IP address as well. Port, yeah. Port collision. So once the other cluster shuts down, let's, we'll give this another try. See if we can't run. At the very least, I want to see if that dies the path. And then while 
all that's coming up. I'll go ahead and export my nomad adder to HTTP. I don't want to apply that. Well, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, it's been a long time since I've had a, something go completely sideways. It's humbling. Thank you for being a kind audience or cohort, as the case may be. This is much better than the three kids. Right? <laughs> 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 Let's see. Relax. <laughs> 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 yeah, because you're not the one. <laughs> This isn't because you got an M1 rack and you don't, and you're trying, yeah, but to, you're trying to bring up but the AWS Lambda, and Lambda does have a beginning process communication with your service providers. So six boxes you spin up can still look like one box. It's right. a shared memory across all things. So this worked before I ran the hashy box. I wonder if they're, they are my VBox settings. Soul call across all six boxes and coding a soul call and doing REST API across all six boxes. It makes my problem as a programmer, even though I'm going through a registry, a little bit more complicated than if all six boxes share the same memories. Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, there's no one around it. And this is what I'm seeing as, as something that, that I don't know we ever be actually caught up in. Um, the idea is that like we want to have separate instances and they they are literally the same code running in those instances and then you have a load balancer above them that's sending traffic to one of those instances or the other. And, and they're just picking up yeah, yeah, they're just picking up that part is true. That part is true. But still it's the yes or no if it, the inter-process communication is the it's a yes or no if there's shared memory. That's not, I don't want to do, if I don't have to, the cost would necessarily So, so what's the use case? Like, where would you, what, how what's would the you, use case? Yeah, what's the use case there? Like, okay. I'm going to try First you have to accept that distributed computing for a long time. Oh, absolutely. I get that. I get you, that. you have to accept that in the process communication for a long time. Three. You have to accept that this is broken. Right. But there, there's one that, you know, the if it does the case, we're talking about the top um, process, top process talking on one, one instance of a piece of hardware, right? Right. So where you. Packages. Yeah, I mean, so. Right, but, well, okay, yeah. I yeah. Mean, but, so, but then. You still set up the environment, but you still want to be able to do your Mac reviews. It's, it's, it's a, the six boxes look like one. I don't want to have to do, okay, let me do a lookup to find that box to call the box. Yeah. Just to do the shoot over something to it. <laughs> the Google way is we send it to all the boxes, and the first one that responds is the one that. <laughs> yeah, well, you, know, you, you, you know, but you, you understand what I'm saying. It's like, you, you, because one of the things that paper showed, because we're looking at it, can we press pause for now? Absolutely. We are, we are out of time for okay. the official presentation, so I'm going to wrap it up now for everybody on the internet. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody joining on the internet, but if you are there, we're sorry that uh, we, we uh, were so so off the, the uh, cool stream. Uh, we're off script uh, today. Uh, but uh, it was a fun live hacking session, and we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and I'm going to catch you all in about 
four months, and we're gonna either we're either gonna pick up with like a tour of where we got this hashi box like dev environment, all in one contributor environment, uh, or we're gonna take a look at chaos engineering. So, uh, thanks everyone for joining us, uh, and we will catch you in four months. Thank Take you. Thank you, Derek. Thanks, Derek. Thank All right. Now we can talk about it. All the other No more no man. No more no man. Bye, no man. Did you get a new laptop? I got re- I, they, well, I got a re image laptop. That okay. Cool. And so, it's not like a transition from like an Intel to M1 chip issue. No. There was, it wasn't that, but, but something, a lot of things did. VirtualBox 4 something to VirtualBox 6 something. You're not using Fusion. Uh, <laughs> uh, I went to using, I went from using our vagrant file to using this hash, this HashiBox uh, project. Um, and anyway, I'll stop it myself. Does, does Nomad have a hosted offering?